Hey guys, welcome back to Chaos Core Tech. My name's Garrett, and today we are going to finish up the Buzz Project. And before we get started, uh, I wanted to quickly apologize if my voice seems weird. I'm fighting off a bit of a cold. So I'm sure some of you might be confused um, because we technically finished up this project in part three um, and now there's a part four. But there were a few things that I didn't get to um, hit on in part three because um, that video was already getting too long. So I just decided to split it off into a part four and talk about some of the weirder things with this project. So let's get started. Okay, so first up, purge towers. Now, um, I usually showcase these uh, front and center with the finished print just to give people an idea. Like, I don't want to mislead anybody and think that into thinking that multicolor printing is, um, you know, doesn't produce any waste or anything like that. So I usually show this stuff right alongside of it. And in past um, prints, I've even weighed the purge block to see how much filament it used compared to the print itself. Um, the reason I didn't do that this time is because uh, things were just so weird with this print that we didn't even use a consistent MMU to print them with. Um, sometimes we had weird things happen where like the purge tower sort of failed, but the print didn't. I don't know. It was just, it was so weird that I'm like, I cannot reliably say that these are accurate purge towers. But I do have quite a bit of purge here. And every time I show this stuff, I get a ton of comments from people saying, yeah, it's cool, but it's just so much filament waste, I don't think I can do it. Which is fine. Multi-material printing definitely isn't for everybody. Um, but for someone like me, and this one is an exception because this was a cursed print, but a normal multicolor print like Optimus per se, the reason that it's worth it for us is because if I were to have Chelsea um, finish this, paint it, sand it, do all that stuff, um, the amount of time it would take her to post-process and make it look good, um, it, it kind of outweighs the, the amount of filament that I waste. So yes, it definitely wastes filament, but uh, to me it's worth it. And it won't be worth it to everyone. And of course you have to take into account that um, these are not solid. Like this one is pretty much like this whole white chunk here is almost entirely infill. Um, this is very light, but something like this is very heavy because there are color changes all through. So you can't take the appearance of these at their value. And you also have to realize that I was doing something very specific here with Buzz. Um, Buzz needs to look like this. There wasn't a lot I could change to make him use less material in the purge blocks. But a lot of prints, you can optimize them. And I think I'm actually gonna do a video on this in the future because I think people would find it interesting. But there are scenarios, and if you are keen to this, and you're, the goal is to save as much material as possible, you can print a whole bed of things that barely have any purge tower. So it's all about what you're printing, and I believe that it's very worth it in specific scenarios. Let me know down in the comments if you'd be interested in seeing a video like that. Now let's get into talking about some of the weirder things we had to do to finish this, just because uh, I wanted this thing to be done. I, I kind of needed it to be done. It was taking so much time and it was uh, so frustrating to get through. So I was kind of like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to finish it within two weeks and um, if that means that I have to print parts separately I have to print parts separately and that's actually what I had to do with the arms here so you may have noticed in um, part three you can see Chelsea gluing these parts and for um, someone printing this who was not having the issues that we had um, these the arm like the bicep areas would have just been one print so there would have been less gluing there and that's another reason that the purge towers wouldn't be um, accurately reflected here um, and then another thing was the eyes. Now his head is kind of a special situation anyway because technically there's six colors there and as far as I know there's no multi-material systems that can do six colors. Um, Prusa's MMU2 can do five colors but that, I think that's as close as we get. Um, I don't know that for sure though. Um, so we had to get a little bit creative. So the face printed with the whites of the eyes, but the um, black and the blue of his eyes were not there. They were just kind of indentions. And I was planning on printing them separately, but visit part two. Um, so Chelsea decided she was just gonna use a 3D pen. And actually the day that she put those on there, we had just received a package from 3D SEMO containing two of the basic pens. So the eyes that you see on there were actually hand created by her using the 3D CMO pen. 
So I thought that was pretty cool, and kudos to Chelsea for doing a good job on the eyes. They, they actually look really freaking good. Also, if you want to check out that 3D CMO Basic uh, 3D pen, I will put a link down in the description. Uh, they're kind of cool. But like I said, we will be doing a couple projects and probably a review of this pen um, sometime in the near future. So with all that done, the only thing we had left to do were these little emblems that you see all over. Now, these I knew were going to be an issue from the start because um, they're too small at the scale I'm printing Buzz. Um, I couldn't have printed those multi-material, maybe if I got a super tiny nozzle or something like that, but um, that was not in the scope of this project. So like any super creative person, I just uh, didn't think about it. I put it off till the end, and this I think has to be one of the only times in history that that actually paid off. Because in that time that I was putting this off and Buzz being cursed and stuff like that, we actually got a laser cutter. So it just kind of happened perfectly. So basically what I did is I went on Google and I just found an image of all of these little emblems kind of laid out and I rearranged them and stuff using Photoshop. And then I had Chelsea print them off using a 2D printer. I feel so weird having to specify that those printers are 2D printers, but you know, the paper and ink kind. And I just did a little bit of measuring and stuff just to make sure that the emblems were the right size. Um, and they're not perfect, but they're uh, pretty close. And I bet you're thinking, um, why couldn't you just cut those out with scissors? And you're right, but I have a laser. So... Then in terms of actually applying the decals here, um, we did something a little bit different and I don't know much about this so um, I'm just going to play this clip of when we were um, putting them on and let Chelsea do the explaining. So those are super tiny. How are we going to get them on Buzz? Good question because I do not have a good type of glue to stick them on, I don't believe. Um, I used my last bit of super glue on him. And I don't think super glue would work well for these anyway. It'd so probably get wrinkly since it's just paper. I'm thinking, yeah, it's going to get wrinkly. So my thought was nail polish. What do you think? <laughs> See, you know, I would not know. <laughs> that stuff is I'm just like... thinking that they're kind of like decals in a way. Yeah. So if I'm careful enough, I can stick them on with nail polish. And then when I gloss the entire model, that'll like seal them in sure yeah that makes sense all right let's try it cross your fingers because i don't want to redo these I'm, I'm holding the camera i can't cross my fingers <laughs> cross your toes because i don't want to redo these i'm, I'm not <laughs> dexterous enough <laughs> to do that <laughs> okay well let's do this one first do you want to explain your new tattoo they haven't seen it yet my new tattoo? Yep. Explain it? Oh, just, you, you got a tattoo. I got a really big tattoo. Well, for uh, me, it's really big. How long did it take? 10 hours. 10 hours of tattoo, but it's a start of a sleeve. So 10 hours is not really anything when you think about it like that. So, and you got a really good price for that amount of time. Yeah, I think it, just because I was kind of helping him out with his portfolio, so. Hashtag ink the maker. Huh? Huh? <laughs> yeah. Let's start that one. No, because then I would have to get a tattoo too. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's working. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Ooh. Oh, it looks good. I think it's going to work. It's not wrinkling or anything weird, so...
And with all that done, Buzz was complete. The only thing left to do now was um, spray him with the clear coat. And Chelsea actually went with a glossy clear coat because um, he's a toy. He's supposed to be shiny. So we thought it would add a little bit. Um, and the clear coat really just helps um, seal everything in. It'll help protect that paper a little bit too so that doesn't um, become damaged over time. So I know we showed off some uh, showcase pictures in part three. But we went outside and filmed some more with Buzz. So I figured we'd just show more pictures here. Enjoy. He's finally done. We can put it to rest. Um, so I'm sure some of you will be wanting files, so um, check the description. They will be up on Thingiverse. Um, a link will be down there. And I am not liable if this turns into a curse print for you as well, so uh, print at your own risk. Oh, also, I don't think I mentioned, but um, we didn't glue the wings on, so um, they are actually detachable in case you want the non-winged version. So it um, doesn't really change the way you print it or the model or anything. It's just um, if, when you're gluing it, don't glue the wings on. If the, the pins are tight enough, then um, it works out pretty nicely. All right, guys, well, thank you for watching. Um, sorry this project has taken so long. It, it's been a journey, but luckily I was able to capture most of that on film, and we got some pretty good videos out of it, I think. And I just wanted to give a quick shout out to my patrons, past and present, everyone who supported me, because they are the ones who allow us to keep going when things don't go as expected with this and we have to um, buy extra filament and extra pieces here and there. Our patrons are the real MVPs here. So thank you patrons, and if anyone out there is not a patron and wants to check it out, there is a link down in the description. We really appreciate all the support and it allows us to keep creating bigger and better projects. Alright guys, well thank you for watching, and until next time, keep creating.